What is the executive? Welcome to the Civics Academy Governance Series. In these videos, we explore different aspects of democratic governance and the concept of the separation of powers as one of the key features of democracy. In this video, we look at the executive branch of government, its responsibility and tasks. Democracies are characterized by the separation of functions and powers between the three branches of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. Each branch checks the power of the other two so that there is a balance of power between them. The executive branch of government is responsible for the daily administration of a country. That is why we often refer to the executive as the government. It carries out its own policies, implements laws passed by the legislature, and ensures that decisions of the judiciary are implemented. Chapter 5 of the Zimbabwean Constitution explains how the executive is formed and how it functions. The national executive is made up of the cabinet, which includes the president, the vice presidents, and the ministers of each government department. Deputy ministers are not part of the cabinet, but they are also part of the executive. The head of the executive is the president who is directly elected by voters for a fixed term of five years. With effect from 2023, the two vice presidents will stand for election together with the president and will also be directly elected by voters. Until then, the president nominates the vice presidents. The president designates one of them as first vice president and the other as second vice president. Neither the president nor the vice presidents are members of parliament. The president appoints the ministers and deputy ministers. The president decides what each one's powers and functions are and may dismiss them at his or her discretion. The president chooses his or her cabinet from the members of the Senate or the National Assembly but may select no more than five ministers from outside parliament. The ministers are the heads of different ministries also referred to as departments. There are about 25 departments in the Zimbabwean government. Examples are foreign affairs, industry and commerce, or finance and economic planning. Ministers share their responsibilities with deputy ministers. The ministers and deputy ministers who were chosen from the Senate or the National Assembly remain members of parliament. Those chosen from outside parliament may sit and speak but not vote in parliament. The vice presidents, ministers and deputy ministers are accountable to the president for the performance of their duties and must also account to parliament about matters for which they are responsible. Ministers also contribute to discussions on matters of importance including the adoption of laws in the Senate and the National Assembly. While the national executive deals with issues concerning the whole country, there is also a provincial executive for each province and a local executive for each town or city. These are governed by Chapter 14 of the Constitution. The provincial executives are known as provincial councils and, in the case of Arara and Bulawayo, metropolitan councils. Each provincial council is headed by a chairperson and includes a number of elected members as well as the members of the national parliament whose constituencies are in that province. The metropolitan councils are headed by the mayors of Arara and Bulawayo and include the senators and members of the National Assembly elected for these cities. At local level, there are different kinds of urban and rural local authorities or councils. They are headed by a mayor or chairperson and consist of a number of elected councillors. Each council has the right to govern the local affairs of the people within the area for which it has been established. Now let's talk about what the executive is responsible for and its tasks. It is the responsibility of the executive to govern the country in the best interests of its citizens and in compliance with the constitution. The executives at the national, provincial and local levels of government have their own exclusive tasks but must cooperate with each other. The national executive is responsible for directing the work of government, preparing and implementing national legislation, developing and implementing national policy. 
a provincial or metropolitan council is responsible for the social and economic development of its province. Local authorities, such as urban and rural councils, provide the people living in their areas with municipal services such as electricity, water, roads, and refuse removal. The executive further has the responsibility to ensure that the law is enforced through its respective departments and the police and prosecuting authorities. Each of the three branches of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary, checks the exercise of power of the other branches. The national executive is accountable to parliament. Parliament oversees the exercise of power and the work of the executive and checks that departments spend their money wisely. Ministers regularly appear before parliamentary committees to explain their work to members of parliament and to justify their department's decisions and spending. The executive is further subject to the judgments and orders of the judiciary. The judiciary can check whether a minister or the president has complied with the constitution and can declare invalid any action by a minister or the president if the action is in conflict with any provision in the constitution. Summary The executive is the branch of democratic government that is constituted by the cabinet, which is the president, vice presidents and the ministers and also the deputy ministers. This branch is responsible for the day-to-day -day administration and carrying out of national legislation and policies through the work of its departments. The executive operates at three levels of government, the national, provincial and local levels. All of these levels of government have executive authority in their own spheres. Within the balance of powers, the executive is accountable to and is monitored by the legislature and it is subject to the decisions of the judiciary.